Yo, yo, YouTube. This is a video for Monday the 5th of August. Can you believe we're in August already? Today it is Wednesday. Um, I will go through what happened on Monday with this video. Um, it's I am a bit of a part-timer at the moment, so my videos will be probably less frequent than they used to be. Let me start off with my stats for that day. Wasn't a great day to be honest, but here we go. Uh, based on an average fuel cost of 13.66 pence per mile, I drove 210 miles in total. I worked for eight hours and I earned 150 pounds, 150, from three CX jobs. It was a cost and fuel of 28 pounds and 69 pence. And so after fuel, let's take into account my net earnings for Monday were 121 pounds. Not great, I must say. And this is how it happened. So, I didn't have anything booked in in the morning. <coughs> and I managed to win a job going from Peterborough to Milton Keynes. It was for a long wheelbase van job. The loaded miles was 56 miles. And I bid 80 pounds, eight zero pounds. I got that given to me at just gone 10 past 12, 9 in the morning. And so I got myself um, to Peterborough and I was on site by 4 minutes past 10. Actually, no, that's when I finished, wasn't it? So I got to on site about 5 to 10 at 9.55. And when I arrived, I went to the... Uh, so the notes for the job was that it's a pallet of paving slabs, no more than one tonne. And when I got to the pick-up point, I told them I was there to collect these pallets, and I got some paperwork off the reception, and everyone was quite surprised I was taking a whole pallet of slabs. At least the forklift driver was, anyway. So I just said to him, well, okay, do you know how much the pallet weighs? And he says it's 1,500 kilograms. And it's on the paperwork as well, 1,520 was the weight. And I can't take that much weight. It's not even, I'm not even close to taking that much weight. So I had to call the shipper and explain that how much the weight of the pallet was and that I couldn't take that but that I would wait if they wanted me to do half I could wait and do a bit of the job um, the shipper basically just said don't worry about it council will be there on the spot and I got paid my cancellation fee without any hassles which was half of the job value so I got £40 for that uh, cancellation and I do appreciate that shipper didn't make a fuss didn't try and chip me down, they just agreed it and paid the money. Well, at least they agreed, agreed to pay the amount that I wanted. So I was in um, Peterborough and I had to find another job. And it was now, as I said, five minutes past ten. Uh, so there's a few jobs around. I bid on a job going from Huntington to Letchworth Garden City. I got a call for that at 17 minutes past ten. And that was a 37 loaded mile job for a short wheelbase van. And I bid £50, five zero pounds for that job. I was nine miles away from the pickup, about 20 minutes drive. So, I went to Huntington. It's quite easy for me to roll, particularly uh, when you're on the, the, the bypass. And I picked up the load and went to Letchworth. Off 
loaded that and was ready to get another job by 25 past 12. And I was trying to avoid all the jobs that went into London at this point because it was too early in the day to do that. If it had been sort of three o'clock, I'd have done a London trip. It's my last trip of the day. But it was way too early. So in the end, I did get a job. I got a call about it at 12.40. So that was 15 minutes after I started looking. And it was picking up from Bedford and going to Newmarket. <coughs> Again, it was a short wheelbase van job. It was 42 loaded miles. And I bid 60 pounds to get that. I was 31 minutes away from Bedford, 17 miles away, and I arrived and picked up the, the load and arrived at Newmarket at 2.35. And there wasn't much work. I was one of, one of, one of two drivers in Newmarket available to work. Uh, but I was quite close to Cambridge, about 15, 20 minutes away. And obviously I was not, not a million miles away from Thetford there. So I thought I'd stay where I was for a bit. <coughs> jobs came, I, I dropped came up in Thetford. <coughs> jobs came from Cambridge, which I bid on. But I didn't bid very low, and obviously I didn't bid low enough. And I didn't get anything at all. So by three o'clock, so about 25 minutes later, I made a decision that I would start to drive back towards home, looking for jobs on the way back. And I thought the best route for me would be to go via Cambridge, Huntington, Peterborough, rather than go Ely, Chesteris, um, and the back route to sort of Whiz Beach way. There's more chance I thought I'd be getting a job on the way. So I did that, but as it was, there was I didn't win any other jobs. So I was about an hour and a half away from home. So I ended up going back with a slight break in the middle to get fuel. And I was then home pretty early. I, was, I think it was about half past five. So quite a short day. Um, I gave myself an opportunity to win work for the fourth job of the day, Newmarket won, and I, put, I had at least two bids out. Uh, if I'd gone lower I could have won them, but I didn't want to go too low. So it was fair enough, I gave myself an opportunity to try and get more work, give it a good chance, and then chosen to get home, you know, reasonably early. <coughs> so that was my day. Um, before I bring this video to a close, I'll just give you a quick update as to where I am now with my same day career work. I'm kind of settling into a bit of a pattern now where I can work Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, I tend to try and get whole days in, like long, long days in if I can. And I am prepared to tramp out on the Monday and the Wednesday night if it means I'm getting paid the right amount of money. Um, I really find it hard to get any work done on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I would do like a little local job in the morning before my dialysis. So I am going to bid on little jobs, I haven't done them yet, but I will do that to try and just add a bit to the money. So effectively, I'm now working a three day week effectively. And I need to work out um, how that will work out financially. I need to work out again what will be my new um, estimated business cost rate, not based on five days a week, but based on three days a week. So it's going to go up quite a lot. <coughs> I need to work out how much I need to earn to live. Um, I don't think I'm quite there with three days, but let's just see how it goes. I've got a few months of this uh, to sort of let it settle down for a bit um, and then I'll uh, sort of make some decisions about you know, whether I need to reduce my spending 
both on my business and on my personal life, or whether I can afford to carry on as I am. I'm going to give myself a month or two of just letting this settle down, seeing what kind of jobs there are, um, seeing whether I can get, sort of regularly get a full day's work on the three days of work that I want to work. At the moment it's a bit in the air, I don't know how it's going to go, but I do enjoy this job. I've got no other options really that are viable with my health issues and with my um, mental health sort of state. So I'm going to make this work. Um, yeah, that's it really. So I'm, I'm, I can't really, I don't really see myself now as full time doing this. Um, not through choice, I love to do it full time, but I'm more kind of a part timer now. Um, but uh, it is what it is. It is what it is, isn't it? So I'll keep doing the videos when I'm on the road. Um, I was on the road a bit last week, I didn't do videos because I was sort of just easing myself back into the, the whole job. There was an incident that happened last week which I will tell you about today. It was not about Monday, but I'll just tell you about it um, without naming names. But I think it's, um, from a driver's perspective, I'll tell you um, what happened and how I resolved it. Um, just because it might be really, really interesting. So, that's the end of my Monday day. This is my story from the week before. And again, what I want to do is tell you it from my perspective, from start to finish. And I can see in this situation, I did make a mistake. Um, which in the future I'll try and learn from. But I can also see why I made that mistake. So, the job I was rung up, I've been on a job going from um, a, sh a short local job from Stamford to. Um, it was Spalding, but it wasn't. It was, it was a, a village. It's, I'm going to say it's Donington, but it's the closest place to the closest place to where I was is probably Sleaford. But it's kind of, sort of between Sleaford and Spalding. And I, uh, well, I, was, I won the job. I can't remember how much it was for, about 50 or 60 pounds for, um, it was a low, no, medium wheel based job. And something like about 30 miles, something like that. And when the driver, when the, when the shipper called me, he specified that I should be collecting two red boards and some plastic inserts. <coughs> and he said that he put that on the notes. Which I thought, yeah, that's fine, that's good, I like it written down. It's written down, I'll remember it. That's what I was thinking. And so then, I think this might have been a job for the following day. I don't think it was the same day. So it's booked in for the following morning. So I then went uh, in the following morning and I went to Stamford, which is about half an hour from me. And the first issue I had was the place I had to go to was a self store place. And I got there about 7.30, 8.30, reasonably early, and um, I had to ring, because the bell on the, the gate wasn't working, I had to ring, using a phone number, the self storage place. And I explained I was going to another, another business on their site, and they let me in and explained where it was. So I then got to the building they, they described, and... It was a bit weird, it was a big warehouse type environment, a type of building, um, with doors both sides, probably a, about 100 metres, no, maybe 75 metres in length, this big warehouse, and the front doors were closed, shutter doors were closed, and there was a few vehicles to the left of this building, like um, cars, and at the back of the building, which is where I was told to go, um, it was, the shutter was closed, and there was like an office bit, but there was a keys in the door. And so I tried the door and the door was open, unlocked and open. So I went in and called out. There was no reply. So I tried calling the shipper, but it went straight to answer phone. <coughs> tried a couple of times. And so the only other answer is I had a named person on my, um, on my thing. I didn't have a, a number for them. So I rang the name, the, 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 the uh, self-storage place again, and just said, have you got contact details for this person? I'm trying to meet, there's no one here. And they then 
so they deal with it. They called the person, and then she arrived in about 10 minutes. Um, and she was sort of the person I was meant to meet there, and her sort of rationale was she lived basically two minutes drive away, and so she tends to like to work from home rather than from this warehouse, which makes sense to me, but um, it wasn't necessarily uh, easy for me to, it was wasting my time, wasn't it? So by the time um, I tried reading the shipper, rung the, uh, the customer and she'd arrived, it was about 20 minutes after I arrived, but I'd sort of been in there, been in there and, and shouted and everything. So I was getting quite close to my half an hour free for um, waiting, for I charged waiting time. But she was a, she had arrived, but then she said she had to wait for a forklift driver to arrive uh, because she didn't have one and, and it was a pallet for to take. Um, so I was mindful that we might go over the half an hour and I didn't want to necessarily um, have that conversation, I just wanted to get off site and get going. Now, at this point, when she arrived, she showed me the pallet. This is where I made a mistake, but I can see why I did it. So she said, this is the pallet you're taking. I looked down, it was a, a, a long pallet with quite a lot of items strapped to it, but quite low down. And I can see a couple of red boards and some black items, black boards. I didn't look closely, that's my mistake. I didn't look closely. It was all strapped down, it was all strapped to the, the pallet. <coughs> and so I took a photo of it, put it on CX, and like I always do. And then we waited for the guy to come to put the van. And in the end, um, he came and I was off site with about five minutes to spare for my half an hour waiting time. Now the pallet was actually two standard pallets sort of strapped together. So we had to come with extra long forks to put this pallet on my van. And we did it okay. Uh, my guys did it on and it was on there. And it was um, quite a, just a pallet full of um, just some items strapped to it. I didn't, as I said, I didn't look closely. And that was where I made a mistake. But I kind of relied upon the person that was there giving me the right things. Now in hindsight, I should have referred back to the notes and looked at the notes and before I'd left site I should have um, rung the shipper and said is this the right stuff and he would have confirmed that it wasn't but to be fair I had rung the shipper twice and it kept going to answer phone so I wouldn't have got through to him I tried reading him again so partly I just wanted to get out of there and get the job done and I thought I was going to a business. Oh, the other thing is, um, I had a postcode and a business name. So let's say Stanford is a PE9, let's say 2AB. It wasn't that, but that's the postcode for my pickup point. My drop off address was a named company, but the postcode was PE9 2AB. Exactly the same place. It was the wrong postcode. So I, I couldn't ring the shipper to find out the right postcode. I, I asked the lady I was with, did she know where I was meant to go? And she said, oh yeah, I'll find out from you. I'll ring my customer. So she rang her customer. Let's call her Kate. So let's say I'm with, um, I'm with Michelle. Michelle rings Kate. And Kate, who's Michelle's customer, says, I don't know where it's meant to go. So that wasn't very helpful. I couldn't get hold of the shipper, and so, but the but Michelle said, "Oh, I know where this. My driver's been there." And when I talked to the company name, she knew where it was. So she found out, and she printed out uh, like a, um, a piece of paper with um, like a, like it's like an invoice type thing, but not not with any details on. But uh, like a, from her system, she had on her system the address of this this um, this place, and it looked to me like a business address. Let's say it was called ABC. <coughs> and she gave me the uh, the name of the the, uh, the the address, which is like 23 High Street, let's say. 
and so I, I was really thankful that I got the right address and I got the items on board. So I then made my way towards um, Donington and I found 23 High Street. It wasn't actually 23 High Street. And um, I walked up, went up this drive and it was going to a house. I thought, this is crazy. This, is, this doesn't seem right. And I was not sure what to do. So I went, I thought, I'll go to the house and I'll ask them if they know where this business is. So I went up, the guy came out and I said, do you know where this business is? He said, oh yes, me. I work out my hat, work from home. I said, oh brilliant. So, so I, had, I was in the right place. So then I showed him what I brought and he said, that's not my stuff. I just want, and he pointed to this board and this package. So we took off one red board and one sort of package, it's like a um, plastic wrapped package about a foot long and about um, three inches in diameter, about four inches in diameter. And it's all wrapped up, so I'm assuming, in hindsight, they were the plastic inserts. But there was another red board, which he didn't want, and then obviously the other boards. And the other boards now, I can see, were MDF boards, black MDF boards. And he explained to me that the previous day, he'd had a delivery come to him that was meant to be this stuff that I brought to him today, but it, it was wrong stuff. And so they'd had to be, they'd had to be collected by someone else in the morning, that morning, while he waited for his stuff to deliver by me. But the stuff that I had got was the stuff that had been collected but unwrapped. So it had arrived, arrived to him wrapped, and I'd now brought it back to him unwrapped. Which didn't make any sense to me or him. So, I took a photo of what I gave to him, I got him to sign the pod for his stuff, and I came off and I rang the shipper. And obviously he went to answer phone, so I sent him a text saying, please can you call me ASAP? So I now had these extra things on my van, two pallets worth, probably about, I don't know, seven or eight boards of various sizes, a bit of cardboard. I, I took a photo and it was on CX of what I was, I'd left. The shipper, to be fair, called me back quite quickly and I explained to him I had some extra stuff in my van and that the guy had just taken one board and one plastic wrapper, wrap thing. And he then went to his, he then had a look at it and then ran me back. And he said, what that stuff is on there, it's waste. And I said, well, what do you want to do with it? I said to him. And he said, and, his, and basically his response was, I made it clear to you to pick up two red boards and plastic inserts. So he, he didn't answer my question. And so I said, oh, fair enough. Well, yeah, okay, fair enough. But the, 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 this is what I was given when I was at the place. And it was obvious from his tone and what he, the words he was using, he was not going to engage in any kind of negotiation. He kept repeating, I made it clear to you what I told you to get. It was two red boards and the inserts. So I said, okay, fair enough. So does that mean you're not going to give me any money to get rid of this? And he didn't answer that question, but he said, basically said, I'm not going back to my customer to ask for any more money because you made a mistake. Or worse this effect, I'm paraphrasing, but this is basically where it went. So because of my personality, I'm not going to argue with him because, you know, what's the point? I don't ever find that gets me anywhere. So I just resolved to write, fine, fair enough. I, I understand that you are blaming me for this. I understand you won't give me any money for this. Let's, call, let's bring this conversation to an end. Yeah, worse that effect. So, so we finished the conversation and I was now left with some waste stuff to get rid of. And I thought, my, my first instinct was, I better go back to Stanford and give this back to uh, where I got it from. And I started driving towards Stanford, then I thought, if this is waste, the person I did it from was just a warehouse, it wasn't the manufacturer, it wasn't even the customer. <coughs> and, I, and they were the people that delivered it correctly in the, in the morning. So she's not going to want to have this stuff back with her. So I am genuinely now stuck with waste on my van. And I understand that the shipper is blaming me for this. 
and I understand there is an element that I am at fault, but it's not completely. It is understandable why it's my fault in my view. It's my view. It's all in my head. And what I found frustrating and what I find unreasonable is that the shipper didn't even offer to pay a token amount out of his own pockets to help with the situation. I understand he didn't want to ring his customer because obviously he didn't want to upset his customer. The fact that he didn't even try I think is disappointing. But you know, I can understand I can understand that at least. But he was just gonna he didn't want to lose pocket lose lose out pocket either. So I feel that I was kind of in the middle of a situation that was not completely my fault because the people that delivered the items the, following, the earlier morning did it wrong. And it was the company I collected from that had done that incorrectly in my view. So anyway, I couldn't do anything about that. I had to resolve this. So I drove away towards Stanford and then my mind was going into problem solving mode. And that's what I'm best at. And I was quite proud of this solution, which is why I'm telling you this on the video. This is why I am um, telling you I made a mistake in the first place, because everyone likes to laugh at me about making mistakes. But here is the solution that I came up with, and I hope you would agree it was a pretty good solution. And I'm gonna name check this company. I was driving down the high street and I went past a company called Prince Build. They may or may not be national. There's a couple of uh, um, their, there's a couple of their um, depots around East Anglia. And Prince Build are like a builder's merchant, but they're not very big. And I delivered to this Prince Build once before and I thought, well, I wonder if they've got any skips, because they're builders versions. I didn't know they did, so I popped in, I went to reception, and I put on my very best, kind of, I'm in desperate need, please can you help me voice. And I said, where's the effect of, this is, this is a reception area. I said, you know, first of all, there was a bell, and I had to ring the bell and say, Hi, I'm a courier. I've got a bit of a strange request to ask you. Please, can I come in? And then they let me in. Went to a receptionist. It was a lady. And I said, worst effect of, I'm, this is a real big long shot, shot for me. And I'm really desperate for some help. I'm hoping you can do that. I've got some stuff in my van that I have to get rid of, which is waste. Have you got a skip? I can put it into. Um, I have. I've got a, um, ten pounds in cash, if that's helpful. And she said, "Oh, whatever that. I'll go and ask someone." So she went to ask her male colleague, who was sort of, I, I would say, kind of an office manager type bloke. He came over to see me, and, I drew, and he was a bit more, a bit more um, suspicious of me. <coughs> but I explained, I'm really sorry to ask, but is it possible that I can put some stuff in your skip? And he said, I'll have to come have a look at it. I said, that's great, yeah, please do. So I went round and showed him, and it was only really, it really only was only about eight boards of MDF. And so, he said, yeah, I'll do that for you, mate. And I was really grateful, and I said, oh, thank you, you're just amazing. So he let me into his gate, I reversed up, we emptied out this MDF, um, another one of his colleagues came to help us even help us upload it. Um, his name was Gareth, if I remember correctly. And his colleague's name was Steve, if I remember correctly. They were absolute amazing stars. And um, basically, I emptied my van out and they didn't even take the tenner off me. Which is good, because I had five pounds in my pocket. I thought I had ten pounds. When, when I put my hand in my pocket to get it out, it was only a fiver. So that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> I, did, I did have five pound coins in my van, but that would have been a bit embarrassing doing that. So, in the end, this Prince Build um, depot, which I think was in another place called, I don't think I, I 
think it was Donington, it might have been no, I can't remember. But it's just one to Donington anyway. They were really kind and they were amazing, amazingly helpful. So I then was then available to look for more work. And I didn't have to pay any money to come that waste. Um, so I was really grateful to both them and that company. Right, let me bring this video to a close. And um, I shall... Oh yes, I'm doing a job now. Today is Wednesday. It's a bit of an experiment. And uh, I shall tell you all about it. Possibly on Friday. Possibly tonight. Depends how my day goes. So, thank you very much for listening to my video. I hope that you're all being successful, however you choose to find that word for yourselves, and I'll uh, speak to you soon-ish. Farewell friends. <laughs>